On this edition of the ZTV Sports Report, we'll give you an inside look at what it takes to be a part of the greatest student section in sports, the AK Rowdies. We'll also give you scores and highlights for our men's soccer, women's soccer, and volleyball teams. So buckle up because the ZTV Sports Report starts now. Welcome to another episode of the ZTV Sports Report, your home for everything Akron Zips Athletics. I'm John Alfieri. And I'm Nico Weathers. We'll have an exciting show for all of you today filled with action, so let's get right into it. The men's soccer team finally returned home from an abysmal road trip on Saturday, September 28th against Cornell. Akron has been on the road for four of their six games this season, a tough task for a young team. Akron has had a difficult season so far, scoring only three goals on the season and allowing ten, heading into last Saturday's matchup. Here with the highlights is my co-host, John Alfieri. The Akron Zips kicked off against the Cornell University Big Red on September 28th at First Energy Stadium, Cub Cadet Field. The crowd was amped up and ready for some action as Akron looked to pick up their first win and entered the game with a record of 0-6, while Cornell entered the game with a record of 4-2 on the year. This would be Akron's second home game of the season, and they would be back in the 3-3-0 for the first time since September 2nd. Both teams came on aggressively as number seven, Diogo Pacheco, flung the ball across the box for David Egbo, who just missed the net. Cornell nearly scored on a free kick by number 15, Tyler Bagley, as he put a ball into the box for Tate Kyer, but luckily, keeper Joe Bowles was there for the save. Here's another angle of how wide Bagley whipped the ball across the field with accurate precision. Akron's next opportunity came when Pacheco again crossed the ball, this time for Federico Serra, who just missed the top of the net. Cornell finally put a point on the board in the 36th minute as Griffin Gerrard brings the ball to the middle of the field and passes to Connor Drought on the outside, who passes it into Brandon Morales for the big red goal. As you can see, the defense of Akron all moved to the left as Morales stayed patiently in the middle of the field and waited for the pass from Drought for the easy one-touch goal. After the half, Akron finally responded as Paul Hernandez whips a ball into David Egbo, who jumps and heads the ball in for the Zips goal. As you can see, Egbo really gets up over the Cornell defender to give Akron their first goal of the night. Shortly after, Egbo nearly finds the back of the net again as Pacheco rips a shot that deflects off Cornell's keeper and spins for a moment before it's finally cleared. Akron stayed strong defensively as Cornell attempts a corner and pops the ball up in the air before it's grabbed again by Tom Bowles. Cornell's second goal came off a free kick from Harvey Fuller that got accidentally kicked by Paul Hernandez to give Cornell an own goal score. Akron continued to struggle defensively as Fuller's shot just gets deflected by the keeper Bowles. As if it couldn't get any worse, Akron struggles to get the ball out of their own half and it is taken away by a Cornell forward who takes the ball to his right but is met by Bowles who makes him misfire. Akron would score again in the 84th minute as Marco Milanese would put one in to tie the game at 2-2 and send it to overtime. In OT, Akron had a chance to score as Carlo Rattaccio passes the ball into David Egbo, who just misses another header. Cornell would put an end to this one eight minutes in, though, on a corner as Tyler Bagley sends a ball deep into the box for Ryan Bain to squeeze into the net for a 3-2 Cornell win on the road in overtime. Look at the bottom right side of the goal and you can see that ball just slips past Bowles and goes into the net. Tough break in a hard fought match for Akron. The Zips would drop to 0-7 on the year as their season blunders would continue. Goals on the day were scored by David Egbo and Marco Milanese. Defensive issues really seem to be the X factor for Akron in this one. With CTV Sports, I'm John Alfieri. The overtime loss to Cornell drops the Zips record to 0-7 on the year, a surprising start for a team that lost in the NCAA championship last fall. John, don't forget last year, Akron got off to a slow start as well and bounced back during MAC play. They were also underdogs last year in the NCAA tournament, but overcame the odds and made an appearance in the final match. Once Maction starts, I believe the Zips will get right back on track. We have some more men's soccer coming your way, but first, let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll have highlights from our volleyball team as well as the men's soccer team's latest match. Stick around. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. My text to emoji ratio has gotten a little out of hand. A little? Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. Hey, 
Hey, you piece of Akron After Hours is a show on ZTV. It is a sketch comedy show that makes people laugh. Ha ha ha. It is a fun light-hearted time, and everyone on the show loves it. Just look at the producer, he loves every second of being on Akron After Hours. Be sure to keep up to date on all of the laughs this semester. Welcome back. The most success from the Akron sports team comes to us from the women's volleyball team, who've had a powerful start to the season, both in and out of conference play. Some players that have been impressive this season include Alexis Adletta, who leads the team in kills, and Ashley Richardson, who leads the team in digs. Head coach Tom Anna has this team rolling as they have won six straight, heading into their matchup with the Ball State Cardinals. Here with the highlights is Desmond Mitchell. Hello, Zip fans. Your Akron Zips volleyball squad face off against the 7 and 6 Ball State Cardinals on Saturday, September 28th. To start off the first set of the game, the Cardinals were the first to serve. With a strong starting hit, the Zips kept the ball alive and tossed the ball to teammates to try to get a good setup for a spike. But this did not work as Ball State fired back with blocks to eventually put the first points on the board. The following play. The Zips came back with a nice clean look at a gap in the defense to put the game to 1-1. One one. With a serve from Akron, the Cardinals looked to set up teammates for another score. The first set consisted of many great saves on both sides of the court, but Akron still seemed to come out and hit a great spike to score again. Coming to the end of set one, Ball State are up by three points, making it 20-23 off of an overly powered hit by Akron. Off of the out-of-bounds hit, the Zips were moving quick and using all their power to stay alive and possibly win the first set of the game. They dove to save balls and used good tactics to find them at a scoring advantage, but the Cardinals were still able to take the first set home. In the second set, Ball State still seemed to be locked in the game as they continued to keep the lead over the Zips, attacking open spaces in their defense. With the serve coming from the Cardinals, Akron seemed to strike very fast with a strong strike that the defense could not manage to keep alive. A hit from Akron left Ball State almost giving up a score as the ball rolled off the net. They kept in the play but was not able to recover in time as Akron was able to score. With Ball State needing one more point to win the set, they fought very hard to try to get Akron off balance. A good play with a high toss leading to a spike gave the Cardinals a 2-0 advantage over the Zips. In the third set, Akron were not easy to let up as they came in the game with tons of energy and an extreme eager to score. They moved great the whole set and managed to put the game at 2-1. A very crucial excellent save by the Zips led them to find the Cardinals off balance, leaving the backcourt wide open. This game was definitely something not to miss as the Zips started to go on a tear, scoring left to right getting a big gain over the Cardinals. The Cardinals still attempted to keep the fourth set alive by scoring and keeping hope. But Akron was too fired up as they had great ball movement along teammates and strong hits that the opponents could not return. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The game went all the way to the fifth set, with both teams anxious for a win. Ball State final sells with the first point to start off the last set. The game was a constant back and forth battle against Akron and Ball State. They both got stronger at recovering their weak spots and made this game an incredible game to watch. They were both putting their complete all into the win, as you can tell by watching the amount of amazing effort the battle was. The crowd was on their toes as the score kept going from match point to match point. Things were getting intense. At the score of 17-16, the Cardinals tried to fire with a score to tie the game, but ended up spiking the ball too hard as it gave Akron the final score to win the game. Your Akron Zips beat the Ball State Cardinals in a 5-2 game. Thanks for watching. Go Zips! Thank you, Desmond. The five-set victory puts the Zips at 9-4 on the year and keeps their win streak alive at 7. Aaliyah Karstner led the team with 17 kills, and Emily Wigand had a monster performance with 52 assists. That is outstanding. Good luck the rest of the season. Let's return to our men's soccer team who look to turn their misfortunes around against VCU in their last match on Wednesday, October the 2nd. Here with the highlights is my co-host, Nico Weathers. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? The Akron Zips men's soccer team are looking forward to getting back into the win column as they take on VCU in a soccer match October the 2nd, 2019. The game starts off with a corner kick for the Akron Zips and they pass near the goal and they score their first goal of the match. Bang! The Akron Zips are now up 1-0 against the VCU Rams and we can look on as they're celebrating their first goal of the match. After the Zips are done celebrating, they get the ball back from their great defensive possession. They make a pass to one another. They're trying to score the second goal of the match. They're trying to be very aggressive with a few dicey moves. The VCU Rams have some good defense and the Zips take a shot and it does miss wide. The Zips get the ball back on offense. They're trying to figure out different things that they can scheme in order to score another goal on the match. They're making a few passes closer towards the goal. They make a short pass to one another. He takes a shot, it is deflected by the VCU's defender. The Zips get the ball, they make another pass, and then a shot, and then it misses due to the goalkeeper's deflection. The Zips are awarded a corner, it's a short pass to David Ekbo, he passes it to another Zip, and they score their second goal of the match! Bada boom! They score! They are the realest guys in the room, the Akron Zips are now up 2-0 to zero against the VCU Rams. We can look on to the Zips celebrating their second goal of the match. They know the game is in their hands and it is theirs to lose. The Zips do get a corner kick. They're trying to score the third goal of the match. They make a pass near the VC Rams goal. The Rams make a great clear out. The Zips are fighting over the ball and they do fail again to score. The Zips can be seen strategizing, figuring out what they can do differently to score another goal on the match. The Zips get the ball back on offense. They take a shot on goal and it is deflected by a VCU Ram and the VCU Rams do clear it out and the Zips are awarded. Even after the Akron Zips second goal of the match, the VCU Rams continue to dominate the time of possession during the second half of the match. They're looking for different looks, different schemes to dominate and score their first and second goal of the match to hopefully tie the game, which they are failing to do. The Zips defense is so strong and so dominant, they're limited every single look that the VCU Rams get. The Rams finally have the ball on the Zips side of the pitch. They make a few jukey and dicey moves, but the Zips defense is too strong, forcing a clear out. The Zips get the ball, but VCU takes it away from them. They try to make a few juke moves, but the Zips do make a great defensive stop. They make another clear out, and now they're fighting over the ball. The Rams are making a very strong offensive possession. As you can see, number four trying to make a nice little juke move, but it is leading to a foul. After the foul, the VCU Rams are making different looks towards scoring their first goal of the match, trying to take the momentum back in their favor. They're making a few dicey and jukey moves. However, the Zips defense is continued to be very strong, and they are limiting the looks that the Rams can get. The Rams are taking different shots on goal. They're acting very aggressive. They're getting a few fouls that are not being called. They're taking shots that are wide on goal. The Akron Zips are showing why they were once ranked the number two team in the entire nation because they're keeping the Rams offense looking stagnant, looking desperate to score their first goal of the match. The game is in the Zips' favor, and as long as they hold on to the lead, they will get their first win of the year. The only two goals of the match today were scored from Daniel Strachan and Sam Tojaga with assists from Colin Biros and David Egbo. 
Akron Zips put up a total of 17 shots, 9 corner kicks, and also had 13 fouls. However, this game right here should turn their fortunes around for the better. My name is Nico Weathers, and thank you for watching ZTV Sports. And that was a great win for the Akron Zips as they pick up their first win of the season. It was definitely much needed and hopefully they can ride this success into the rest of the season. Let's take a break and when we come back we'll have highlights from our women's soccer team. Stay tuned. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know, wherever you are. see elephants hiding in trees because they're really good at it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Hello and welcome back to a new season of Lights, Camera, Akron. I'm Michael Macon. And I'm Jay Goliath. And here are tonight's top stories. Breaking news, there is a new elevator in Colby Hall, and our reporter Naquan James is there to take a look. Thank you, Michael and Jim. I'm live here in a new elevator that was just installed in the Colby Hall. Welcome back. The women's soccer team carried a record of 4-6 and six on the year into their matchup on Friday, October 4th against Ball State. Akron defeated Toledo in their last match by a score of 2-0. to zero. The team came out firing with 90 shots in the game and scored both of their goals off corner kicks. Sydney Worthy and Carly Cholinski both made it on the score sheet for Akron. Here with the highlights against Ball State University is Brianna Gordon. On October 4th, the Akron's women's soccer team found itself in a dominating battle against Ball State University. Ball State starts the game off, instantly limiting Akron's defense from scoring any possible points. The Cardinals continue to dribble the ball down the field, passing the Zips. Ball State continued to push the ball, not letting the Zips deter their passes to one another. Despite the start of the game, Akron regains control of the ball, dribbling it to their side of the field. Aislinn Meany attempts to score, kicking the ball a little short of the net and out. The Zips earn a free kick, number 14, Aislinn Meany fakes the kick, with number four, Kaylee Pinton, kicking the ball over the net, missing. Despite the results, Akron's off offense continued to dribble the ball and created several opportunities for themselves. The Zips controlled their possession of the ball, turning away any Ball State offensive attack. Each player determined to keep the ball from the other continues to pass, working their way to the goal. The Zips make their way to the end of the field, avoiding Ball State's continued defense, keeping the ball in their control away from the opponents, only for their ball to be kicked out. Number 23, Riley Watt, earns a free kick, passing the ball to number 8, Ashley Amato, who passes to number 13, Lucia Lobato, who attempts to dribble only for the ball to be taken by number 16, Melissa Diceman, whose team comes to support. Overall, Akron edged the Cardinals in shots 8-7 and had the advantage in corner kicks 5-3. The Zips outshot the Cardinals 6-3 and three Zips, Ashley Amato, Carly Chalinski, and Aislinn Meany registered two shots in the match. Kaylee Penton and Sydney Ward also posted one shot each. The Zips continued to push the ball until the end. The goalie defended, sending the ball back to the opposite side of the field with each team quickly trying to claim the ball. The fight for the win continues, looking like neither team is giving in. 
Akron continues to defend, refusing to let the Cardinals score a point. Each team, tirelessly trying to defend against the other, refuses to let the ball go, continuously dribbling across the field from member to member as they make their way from one end of the field to the other. The game is winding down with the Zips hoping to win the game of the night. The Cardinals refuse to give them this win and continue to fight for the ball. Neither team's defense will let the other team have it. Both teams are determined to win, not undermining the other's strength, continue to push until the end. The Zips seem likely to win. However, it wasn't enough to win with Ball State scoring the only point that won the game. Tough loss, ladies. Akron's record drops to 4-7 on the year as they look to bounce back in their next match against Miami of Ohio. A player to watch for going into the rest of the season is number 8, Ashley Amato, who leads the Zips in scoring. And we are going to take our final break of the show, but when we come back, we'll have an exclusive interview with the AK Rowdies. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Yo, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Oh, you know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? Juan, it's an emergency. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. What's wrong? It's Goof. I'm on my way. It's worse than I thought. I feel like, like her heartbeat is like the same speed as mine. And I think we have this like deep connection, this heart connection in her heart that there's, there's room for me and mom. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. It's a sensory thing. It's a thing with Asperger's. She's really good with Anya. I've seen adults react to my daughter when she has meltdowns, like she's from a different planet. And this little animal just sat next to my child and was just like, you know, it's going to be cool. She's my superhero. Good job, kitty cat. When we adopted Lucky, we discovered all the wonderful things that make her unique. Lucky's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly she's pure love. Welcome back. You know, Nico, no matter how Akron Sports may be doing, one thing you can always count on is our student section being there to cheer them on. That's right, John. The AK Rowdies are always the loudest ones at any game, showing our Zips some love. Here with an exclusive interview is Jemiah Kyle. On October 2nd, 2019, at the first Energy Stadium, Cub Cadet, the Zips took on a really intensive match against BCU. Although it was a very rainy day, the Zips fan section showed up and showed out to support the men's soccer team. A fan section most of our students are familiar with is called the AK Rowdies. We will have a better look inside what an AK Rowdy is and what it means to our university. To provide you with more information on this group is Nina Barnes, who is co-president of the AK Rowdies. Basically the AK Rowdies is the student section on campus. It's just a ton of people that come together to support our Akron Zips, whether that's in soccer, basketball, or football. What do you expect from an AK Rowdy? Definitely someone who's ready to be obnoxious and loud. Don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone. If you're not loud enough, they're not going to hear you. What's your specific goal with an AK Rowdy? Definitely to bring a lot more spirit to the games. Um, right now our current goal is to get a lot more students involved. You don't get a lot of students on games like a Wednesday rainy night, but our goal is to get this whole hill, hill filled with students. 
And why did you join? Why both? Of, why did both of you join? What was your purpose of joining? I wanted to be more involved on campus, and when I seen this, I was like, I gotta hop right on it. <laughs> As the Zips continued to fight harder, best believe the Rowdies was there to back them up. What do these flags mean? What is the reasoning behind them? So each flag that we have, we have a whole bunch of them. There's some people over there with them too. Um, we have tons of players not from around here. Uh -huh. So we have a flag to represent each of the countries that they're from. UA, 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 UA. Where can students go to sign up for a specific program? So they can actually just come see one of the board members at any of the games and at all of our tailgates before football games. We have tailgates before every Saturday football game. They can come sign up with us outside of the tent. Thank you, Jamiah. Well, that will wrap up this edition of ZTV Sports Report. Make sure to follow us at ZTV Sports Report on Facebook and Twitter, and subscribe to our page on YouTube for all the latest Akron Zips scores and highlights. Signing off, I'm John Alfieri. And I'm Nico Weathers. Go, Go Zips! Zips. This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV. Make media. Make a difference.